Welcome to another Like Maria presentation. This one is on To Autumn by John Keats. And today I'm going to be looking at context, um, the context surrounding this poem. And we're going to look at four key areas of context. Um, the fact of it being his final ode, um, his letter that he wrote to Reynolds describing um, the autumn walk that he went on, the subject matter um, of autumn and other themes, and Keats's own poetic philosophy. So first of all, um, looking at this as an ode, this is the sixth ode, the other five having been completed in the spring of 1819. This it was um, produced in autumn. Um, it's a fairly regular ode form, three stanzas of celebratory poetry, um, celebrating the ripeness and fullness and wonder of autumn. Um, unlike um, many of his other odes, um, it has 11 lines in each stanza. Some critics suggest that this um, just reinforces the fullness. The poem's stanzas are bursting just as the fruits of autumn are. It's notable that there is no I in this poem. Keats removes himself um, in the way that he's describing this poem. This is different from much of his other writing. And some people suggest um, that as he had stopped by this stage writing his epic Hyperion, that this ode, because of its um, amazing um, poetic uh, qualities, has kind of replaced um, his epic, um, that his um, desire to write an epic um, was really fulfilled with the quality in this shorter poem in the ode. Um, so we should note um, that the ode um, form is something that the Romantics, and in particular um, Keats, embraced. Okay, now we're going to look at some quotations from Keats's own letter to John Hamilton Reynolds. Um, and this was written after an autumn walk. And he says, notably, somehow a stubble plain looks warm in the same way that some pictures look warm. Now, a stubble plain is a field after the harvest has been taken. And it usually looks quite barren and bare. But here Keats manages to fill something um, and to see something, to find something in a field that is barren and bare, that is warming and fulfilling. So he turns a negative and emptiness into a fullness and a beauty. In this letter, he also um, mentions the poet Thomas Chatterton. And he says that he always somehow associates Chatterton with autumn. And this fits in very nicely with the theme in autumn of dying. Thomas Chatterton was a young um, poet um, a uh, precursor um, of the Romantics, um, who died um, young through suicide because he wasn't able um, to fulfil his poetic ambition. Um, and here we see a life cut short um, and the evening of the day, the evening of his season, um, cut short in the same way that um, Keats is describing autumn here. So this theme of death and loss and emptiness and a lack of ability to produce um, fruits runs through um, this poem and Keats's association with the season. Uh, we also have the um, point here that he has given up on Hyperion. Mentioned this before, he aspired to write a great epic. Um, he feels that he's failed to do this and this shows a shift in his poetic ambition. He gave up Hyperion claiming that it was too um, Miltonic, that he had to consider the artistic preparation of the verse um, rather than um, just feeling the verse. And he says now that in contrast to the writing of Hyperion, I wish to give myself up to other sensations. We can see here Keats reaching out for a kind of new poetic expression and experience of the subject. 
So he's writing here about autumn, very obviously, um, but obvious here too are the connotations of death and the dying of the year. Um, the fruit and the harvest has been taken, it's been harvested. Um, we have the reaper there, perhaps connections with the grim reaper. Um, we know that death is very present in Keats's own life. He has seen his brother Tom die um, less than a year before the writing of this poem and he has observed a lot of death in his family. Interesting too um, that this poem um, comes from inspiration from a Sunday walk. This is very often the case with Keats. We see it in The Nightingale, we see it with On the Sea, um, we see it with the um, Grecian Urn poem that he sees something um, that triggers his imagination and he produces art from this. We also have these ideas of harvest um, that have been mentioned before. Um, the gleaning of his brain has been mentioned before. He wishes to harvest from his brain. So here we could link the um, nature harvesting fruits um, from the land in the same way that a poet harvested, harvests um, ideas from his brain, that this is a natural process, an organic process, but one which does require a little bit of man's intervention. Some critics have also noted that there are certain social and political circumstances which, which Keats is um, concerned about, um, particularly in the aftermath of the Peterloo massacre that occurred in the spring of 1819. Um, and that some of the um, lexical fields in, in this poem, such as conspire um, and gleaning and the working of the bees, etc., um, reference um, some of the concerns about society's divisions and the poor state of the working population um, and the politically repressive society. Um, very important always with Keats is to look at his poetic philosophy and I've just gathered together some quotations here um, to enable you to ponder on this. One of the key ideas that he comes up with that he's famous for really is this idea of negative capability. He defines this himself in a letter and he says and he, he talks about negative capability being something which Shakespeare possesses and great poets possess. When man is capable of being in uncertainties, mysteries, doubts, without any irritable reaching after fact and reason. He suggests there is something, a quality to a great poet that they can put aside factual, logical reasoning and just reach a state where they are in a communion with an object or a subject and their imagination takes them to that and they are able to then share this um, with the audience. Um, in fact, in this letter, he condemns Coleridge as being someone that does reach irritably um, after fact and reason. And he says that because of this, Coleridge misses something. And that something is, and I quote, a fine, isolated verisimilitude caught from the penetralium of mystery. Um, the penetralium in the most secretive places. And here saying that there is something um, connected with the truth, the essence of an idea, um, of an object, of an artistic expression that is missed if, if one goes um, to, looks at the creative process logically. And that this um, essence of creativity is missed and he feels um, that it's he, other poets um, miss this and he seeks to attain it. Building on this idea, he talks about a sense of beauty overcoming every other consideration and obliterating all considerations. This is a very um, good quote to have up your sleeve because um, many, many of Keats's poems um, concern his notion of beauty. Um, and in autumn, I do feel that he has got um, this verisimilitude, um, this, this essence of beauty of the season, and that this beauty has overcome 
um, the normal um, sense of dying and death, that even on this subject matter, he can create something of extreme beauty and share this with us and place us into um, the midst of autumn. Um, another way he expresses this is he talks about his desire for a life of sensations rather than of thoughts. And here again, a lack of desire to um, participate in logical thought, rather a grasping for sensations, a, a release almost from the um, drudgery of the world to reach a state, a different state. He talks about um, the poetic character and the, po the poet lives in a state of gusto. This is a term he took from William Hazlitt um, and Hazlitt used gusto to describe the power and passion of an artist um, and how they created through this power and passion. Um, so he here is looking at the idea that a poet has no identity. He lives in this state of gusto, he's filling some other body, he's informing and filling some other body, are Keats's actual words. So this notion, this idea about a poet, what a poet should be and how a poet should move um, or remove him or herself from um, the world. This was very much in line with the other Romantic poets. Um, Shelley talks about a sort of transfusion and transmission of consciousness to identify himself with the object when he is writing, that he uh, moves beyond a consciousness um, to uh, another plane, as it were. Um, and also Byron, um, who talks about embodying himself with the character while I am painting it. So these two great Romantic period poets um, also we can see this idea of reaching beyond the logical and the practical. Of course, earlier romantics such as Wordsworth um, is the earlier romantic ideas are where Keats um, found the seeds of his own ideas. Um, a very good place to look for um, contextual um, information about poetry of the Romantic era is the introduction to the lyrical ballads. And here we see um, Wordsworth talking about poetry as the spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. And here I would suggest, um, again with Wartham, he was on his walk, he saw the field, um, and he just came home and wrote the, the powerful feelings um, overflowed onto the page. So, lots of context there. I just want to um, leave you with a couple of quotations from um, critics, because um, this can also be useful as context, the context of the reception of the text. Walter Jackson Bate, a Keats biographer, talked about the poem to autumn being entirely concrete and self-sufficient in and through its concreteness. Um, now, this is um, the sense, perhaps, that um, the scene in um, To Autumn is very painterly. Um, it's very tangible to us um, through the sensual touch, the smell, the taste, the feel of autumn. Um, and I think um, that is um, a very pertinent quote that one could use. Um, and also just the fact that this poem has um, become um, one of the most famous in the English language. And as Harold Bloom says, it is as close to perfect as any shorter poem in the English language. Um, and it's a um, beauty of construction, of balance, of the um, sensitivity of engaging us with the season and placing us in the midst of the mists and mellow fruitfulness um, is indeed very close to perfection. So I hope you've got a good selection now of contexts with which to frame an essay on um, Keats's To Autumn.